Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason Jensen and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we are going to build a background flat. Now, for those of you who are new to the hobby, a background flat is a flat structure that usually goes in the back of the layout against the wall or against your backdrop or even in the background on your diorama right on the edge of it. Now normally a background kit is anywhere from one to two inches deep. So they're very thin. They're just meant for backgrounds. Now the structure that we're working on today is actually part two of this large structure right here and the kit we're working on today is right here in the center in my last video we started this project and we built this structure right here and that video is titled let's design a kit so in this video we'll build the second kit and then there will be a third video where I build this large structure on the end. And then I will do a fourth video where I combine all three structures and put them on a diorama base. Now the three structures can be ordered from carolinacraftsmankits.com. You can order the kits individually or you can order all three of them at once at a discounted price to build the entire structure. So be sure to visit carolinacraftsmankits.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload more videos. All right, we have a lot of work to do, so let's head over to the workbench and get started. Today we are working on the second structure that sits right here in the middle. This structure is a background flat, so it is only an inch deep. So again, you'll have the option of buying it all together, all three structures, or you can purchase this separately and just put it on your layout or diorama as a background flat. Here are the pieces. Now when you get the kit this may be one long piece I'm not sure. Um, if not if it's like this very easy I'll show you how we're gonna put these together. The next thing we have to do is put our bracing on. And the kit comes with 1 8 inch thick strip wood that we're going to use to uh, brace the back of it. So we'll hold those together, flip them over, and then we'll put our bracing on the back. But very important, if it is two pieces, make sure that this is how it's lined up. And this window, we're going to turn this into a door. So I glued my two sections together and then put three strips across the back. Now we're just going to let that dry. This is the little structure that sits up on the roof. Um, I'm going to trim one board off of the top. Uh, you can leave it like this if this is how it is in the kit. Um, I think it's a little too tall, uh, so I'm just trimming one board off of the top. Okay, so all of our bracing is done, and I'll show you up close how I braced it. This is the small structure that sits on the roof. I put the bracing all the way to the edge, flush with the edge, and then two in the center. 
then the side pieces you have to come in to allow for that piece on the on the end so it fits like that and then we'll put our corner trim on there so when I did the same thing for the other side then on the main structure what I did was I put a line a quarter of an inch up from the bottom and then my bracing runs right up to that line and then to the top and I tried to cut them pretty close to being exact um, on the ends I braced it and it's flush with the edge of the wall now the reason we had to leave a quarter of an inch is for our foundation so here is a piece of our foundation and the kit comes with a paper brick material now you can make the the foundation a gray cement if you want to or you can use the stone but we'll glue the stone onto our strip then glue that right on that line and it goes right up against the end of our bracing then when you see it from the front that's what it looks like and as you can see I'm having a very thin foundation uh, I didn't want it to be too thick because of the height of the loading dock just adding a very thin foundation I didn't want this to be too high for trucks to unload okay and then for the side pieces again you have to put your bracing in an eighth of an inch in to allow for that to fit just like that and then we'll put a corner piece a sixteenth of an inch square um, down the corners okay we're going to start to paint the walls and I am going to paint them the turquoise color just like we did on this structure so we just want to try to match this so I'm going to start with desert turquoise I'm going to mix quite a bit to cover all this um, knowing me I'll probably mix too much but that's just how it is now we'll add a little bit of this um, primary blue oh I'm sorry the green was Hauser medium green and now we'll mix in a little bit of primary blue just I put a little bit on my brush now we're trying to create a peeled paint effect so again we're gonna go heavier at the top and then lighter at the bottom then after we're done with this color we'll put a stain over it hopefully you can see that well as you can see I'm just lightly kind of dabbing some color here and there now 
Now, as you can see, my wall is starting to curl a little bit. So what we can do is take regular clean water and just go over the back of it. And as you can see, it's already starting to flatten out. Now you can put some weights on it if you want to. Okay, now we'll move on to the side walls. Again, we'll go heavier at the top and less at the bottom. Important to make sure that you are holding it right side up so that most of your paint is at the top and little at the bottom. And remember, we came a quarter of an inch up from the bottom for our foundation. So that's how you know where the bottom is. Okay, next we will paint our structure that goes on the top. And for that, I am going to use light buttermilk. Same technique. We're sort of dry brushing the paint over the uh, wall and then we'll go back over it with a stain. So because of the overhang, it's gonna be more solid at the top. And then as we get further down the wall, there'll be less paint. Okay, next we're gonna mix up a stain for the walls. And we are using raw umber. We're gonna add a lot of water to it. Now we'll test it on the back. I am gonna add a, draw, a very, very small amount of black. Just gonna touch the end of my brush in it. See, very little. Mix that in. It doesn't take much to darken a color when you add black to it. Now we want to do the opposite. We want to go heavier at the bottom of the wall and then lighter at the top. You just don't want to let it puddle up on there. Sorry, you can probably hear my furnace in the background. <laughs> Every time I start staining, I realize that I forgot to paint my corner trim because I could be staining that at the same time. Next, we need to paint all of our doors and windows. So for our small building, we have three small rectangle windows and a small door. Then for our long wall, we have three big doors, six windows, and one regular door. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to paint these with raw umber. Then we'll uh, dry brush light buttermilk over them. Okay, so as you can see, I just went over them really quick. I wasn't trying to do a solid coverage. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. There's still some of the gray showing through. Okay, now we're gonna put the white on. And I've decided to switch to a sponge. Now we'll switch to a small brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in to the corners.
So I wanted to show you the difference. I just painted in the cracks and corners of this one and not this one. Because when paint chips, it's gonna paint more on the surface and not in cracks and crevices. So I think this helps to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. Now, as you can see, that white is a little bright compared to the white of our wall. Because we put a wash over that. So we're gonna do the same to these. Okay, just wanna make sure it's completely covered. Maybe soak up some of the water with your brush. Okay, so I made this wall too long. So I had to cut a center section out. And then I just put some long strips of uh, 1 8 inch strip wood behind it and glued it all together so and i'll show you why uh, let me move this out of the way so when you combine these three structures together you can see that there is only two big garage doors and then a small entrance door. Now, the other big door, there's a third door, it's right there, but, so if you buy the kit by itself, you will have the length I just showed you, and you'll get those three big garage doors. But then if you combine it, that door will be hidden behind uh, this structure right here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I got a little ahead of myself there and didn't measure it correctly. So, but problem solved. Um, we'll let this completely dry and then we'll add our acetate to our windows and glue those all in and glue our doors in these clamps are incredible if you don't have clamps it is a great investment um, I use these all the time and I believe these came from Micromart And you can see they go all the way out to the end here. So um, you can clamp things that are pretty wide. Okay, next we're gonna paint our trim that goes along the top, right along the roof line. And it's made up of two pieces. It's made up of a wide piece first which should be marked yellow at the end in the kit. Then it gets a smaller piece put on top of that. So it looks like that. I've already stained my wood and now we're just going to Use a sponge and light buttermilk. Okay, the trim is all painted. Um, I even did the uh, corner pieces. Next, we're gonna add some sheet metal across the top of this. So it ties in with our other structure right here. So here is all of our sheet metal. 
and I showed how to do this in my last video. Uh, my last video is called Let's Design a Kit. So please refer to that one. Um, first, I'm going to glue on my trim and then we're going to put this right up against that trim and then we'll have to cut out our windows. So I glued my trim on and the first thing I did was glue on the corner trim on both ends. Then I glued on my trim at the top after I painted it. Now, something to keep in mind when you're gluing that on is there's trim on the side. So I had it hang over. Hopefully you can see that. So that when the trim on the side is put on there, it butts up against, it goes behind the overhang of the trim on the front. Now what we're going to do is put on our metal. You may want to lay it out first. And then after you are happy with how you have your pieces laid on there, then put them right, right above it. Then you can simply put glue on the back and put them on there. We'll get started on that right now. Now you, on this edge, you want to let it hang off just a little bit so that the piece on the side, the edge of it, is covered. Now again, the pieces tend to curl because it's paper and the glue is making it wet. So you just have to hold it for a little bit. Not long. Just a little bit and let it set up. Now for the window, we're going to put that piece right there like that. Hopefully my hand's not in the way. And again, it helps to have a sharp blade when you're doing this. A new blade really helps so it doesn't tear the paper. You see, I just bend it over a little bit so I can see the edge so I know sort of where to cut. Now you see that piece completely covers the window so you can from the back trace your window. Don't worry if it's not exact because we'll go in with a uh, flat file and file the windows. I don't know if I have my flat file here. Uh, yeah, it's right here. So we'll take a flat file and make sure that everything is filed really good so that our windows fit perfect. You want to make sure it's a nice tight fit against that trim at the top. So the side walls are glued on, uh, the corner trim is put on, and the trim around the top. And this is the small structure that will sit on the top. Okay, so I've got my metal glued on the sides. And now what we're going to do is take our pastel chalks and using a rust color, just here and there a little bit, we're going to have that rust running down on the front of the building.
So I was just comparing the color and I think it's a little too green. So to match it, because it's going to end up going with this, um, I made a wash of desert turquoise and I added a lot of water to it. And so I'm just lightly dragging it down just so it matches a little better. Okay, that definitely matches it more. Now I have to redo some of my <laughs> rust because I did that wash over it. I've taken my roof cards and painted the underside of it with uh, light buttermilk. Now I'll tip this upside down and glue it on. Now because this is the prototype or experimental model, <laughs> um, yours, the kit may be a little different. And I know that it will come with a backing that gets put on here. Okay, we just want to make sure that it's an equal amount of overhang all the way around. And then if you do have any glue that's sort of seeping out, just run your brush along it, along the edge. And then we will do the same on our little structure on the top. Again, make sure it's equal on the sides and the front. And we'll put that like that. And I will cut a back for this and glue it on there after we get our foundation um, glued in place. Next, we're gonna glue on our foundation. I painted my foundation with neutral gray. But the kit will also come with the uh, stone textured paper and you could just simply glue that to it that's how it'll look so we'll just turn it over if you wanted to you could use a brush and smear that glue evenly. Make sure it's all the way to the edge. Okay, and I already have my side pieces cut. I have to make sure no glue is seeping out. The back of yours will probably look different, but um, because I had to cut a section out, um, I had to add some some more bracing to combine the two sections, so uh, mine looks a little different. Okay, there it is. Next, we're going to glue on our tar paper. And I've got the back glued on. The In the kit, it'll come with um, a material for the back. I'm not sure what it, it will be. Um, I just glued on black construction paper, but it'll probably come with a thicker card stock um, that you use for the back. That'll give you a lot more support for the roof. Okay, so I just set the top on there for now. But this is what it looks like so far. Next, we're moving on to building the deck. Very simple construction. So 
So the deck is one solid piece for the top. Then right below it, you'll see there's a wide piece of trim. That is this piece here. And in the kit, it should be marked with a yellow tip. Again, that goes right underneath the deck. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight legs. And they're pretty much all one inch apart. The ends are a little closer. And that is out of this about a sixteenth inch square. Might be a hair bigger. Then for the diagonal pieces, we use this. And in the kit, it should be marked with a green tip. Dark green. And that's it. I actually built mine upside down. And uh, I put my posts in place. Then I put my wide trim around it and then did my diagonal pieces. All right, so let's start painting this. We're just doing very little sponging on the top. Maybe we'll do some right next to, right in between the two doors. And then some over here. Now we'll switch to a brush and lightly drag it over. We're not painting it solid because we want it to look like the paint is all chipping off of it. Maybe the ends are a little more solid not as much wear and tear. Maybe they're a little more protected from the weather. Do those a little more solid. Now we can't forget the inside. We don't have to do the back side of the angled pieces, but we do have to do both sides of the legs. For our stain, we're going to use raw umber. And first we'll test it on the bottom. Okay. Make sure you get all of the sides of your posts. Okay, so we're doing the steps. I glued a 16th inch square piece to the end and then I glued the stair stringers to the side of it. Now, we will glue on the individual steps. And the steps, the wood that we're using for it should be the strip wood that has a yellow tip on the end. I know that the end of the wood, the strip wood that you get in kits, isn't always painted. Um, it should be, but some pieces might not get painted, so... Um, just be careful and be be aware of uh, what wood you're using for stuff. It'll say in the instructions. Okay, our little stairs are done. Now we'll take some 
gray pastel chalk. And let's see. It's just a, a gray color. And we'll set it up here and see where the doors are so that we can add some dirt. Some by the door. Okay, we'll take a little bit of dark brown and just a little bit of black. Hopefully this is showing up. And then we'll dirty up the steps a little bit. Right down the center. And then we can also dirty up the bottom of these legs. Now to install the smokestacks. So the kit will come with some straw. And what I did was I wrapped tape around it. Uh, I believe this is a quarter of an inch thick. I used blue painters tape, but you could also use just regular masking tape. Wrap it around probably, I don't know, four or five times. And then I put a dab of glue right at the end just to make sure that it never came undone. Then I cut holes with my knife. If you have a drill, you could also drill your holes or a Dremel tool. Just have to put three holes in the top. Then with a piece of wood, I put in three nails and put these on there and sprayed them with a gray primer. I then painted them with raw umber. Then around the bands at the bottom, I did a wash of burnt sienna. Then I painted the inside of them black, not all the way, but just go down as far as you can with the brush. And then I also did a light dry brushing towards the top with black. Now if you want to, another neat trick is we're going to mix up some black tar. So I'm using regular Elmer's glue and I'm going to take black paint and mix the black paint in the glue. And really I probably added too much paint. Uh, it only takes a drop. Then Around the lower part, the white part around the bottom, we're going to add this glue. And it's okay if you get it up onto that band. That's fine. Then we will put that in the hole. Make sure that it's straight from all angles. So basically it's black glue. But it can end up looking like tar when it dries.
Now, if you want to, if you don't like the look of it and you want it to be a little more smoothed out, you can simply take a wet brush and go around that and kind of smear it out a little bit. Okay, that is done. To finish up the structure, I went on my computer and created some signs. I then printed the signs, weathered them with pastel chalks, and then added some rust with some rust-colored acrylics using a sponge. Well, I think that wraps it up for, for this structure. I think it is a great background kit for any layout or even a diorama to have this on the edge of your diorama um, for a structure in the background I think would look great. I also wanted to mention the uh, strip wood on the back. In the kit, this may be laser cut, it may be strip wood. I'm not 100% sure yet, but it's a very simple construction. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This is only part two of a three structure kit. And again, you'll be able to purchase the kits individually or all together to make one large model. If you have any questions while constructing the models, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, you can contact me through Messenger on my Facebook page at Jason Jensen Trains, or you can leave a comment in the comment section below any of the videos uh, regarding this large kit. So be sure to tune in next time and I'm going to be building the third structure and then the video that follows that I will combine the three structures and also build a diorama base. Well be sure to visit carolinacraftsmankits.com. They have all the information on the structures and pricing and shipping. Well, thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy modeling everyone.